Hi, I'm Kyle Weinmeister, International Sales with Super Vacuum Manufacturing. Today I'll be looking at the V16BL and the V18BD to go over some yearly checklists for your uh, maintenance team. First thing you're going to want to do is really take care of your batteries. They're going to be your powerhouse to how this fan operates, how well it operates, how long it operates. Um, Good practice for these batteries is to go ahead and put a date on these as soon as you purchase them or use them. There's a three year manufacturer's warranty for both DeWalt and Milwaukee. If you ever have any issues, uh, it's best to contact your regional service center. Those can be found on the website for either DeWalt or Milwaukee. We recommend that every five years they be replaced regardless of condition, given the nature of these fans in emergency situations. At regular intervals, the battery should be calibrated. To calibrate your battery, fully charge the battery, then fully discharge, and fully charge once again. This allows the circuitry, the smart technology within both of these batteries to calibrate where zero and 100% charge is for them to better understand how to charge the individual cells. When your battery needs to be replaced, please call your local recycling center. They will have recommendations on how to do that. Both the Milwaukee and the DeWalt battery platforms are supported by a program called the Rechargeable Batteries Recycling Corporation. They set up a program that allows the responsible recycling of lithium ion batteries. Lithium ion batteries are inherently better for the environment than previous batteries such as nickel cadmium. However, they are heavy metals and so it should be re recycled responsibly. If your batteries are damaged, either from a drop or some kind of shock or overheat uh, incident, they should be disposed of properly. Do not continue to use damaged batteries. Um, we've all seen the news reports of fires from lithium ion batteries. Uh, they're very hard to control, usually in unexpected times. So if you do see any kind of deep gouges in the plastic, um, any kind of burning, this here is just dust, it wipes away easily, but if there is any kind of burning or uh, uh, disfigurement from the plastic, from overheating, they should be replaced immediately. After every use, it should be noted whether the fan has any kind of ticking or clicking sounds coming from it. That could be interference of the blade on the shroud, the blade on the guard, buildup on the blade, or possibly a malfunctioning motor with a, uh, a broken brush. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to check for that interference. Before doing that, make sure that all the power sources are removed from the, from the fan, so no accidental uh, powering on can occur. For this, you can use a uh, power drill, a Phillips head, and uh, pliers. Gain access to the blade. Once the front guard is off, this can be spinned manually to find if there's interference on any single point of this on the shroud or possibly the rear guard. While you have this open, it's also best to clean the blade. Uh, try not to score or use a screwdriver to damage the blade. Typically, most buildup is on the back side of the blade, so that's where most attention can be paid to. If a stickier substance such as tar or deeper soot is on the blade, mild detergent and water can be used. However, uh, any kind of tool that would scrape across the blade is strongly discouraged to prevent any kind of excessive vibrations from occurring on the blade. Uh, they're balanced when they are, leave the factory, and so any kind of scoring will add to the vibration. Once the blade is cleaned and checked for any kind of interference, it can be reinstalled. Be sure not to
pressure too much when inserting. The first couple screws can be a little tricky. Use your pliers to maneuver them into the correct place. Once the front guard is back in place, then the interference can be checked once again. Another common uh, maintenance issue would be the tilt handle. We have it factory set as pretty tight. That allows for eventual use to loosen up. It also prevents the shroud from tilting at all during operation. There is a quick adjustment knurled nut that can be used to tighten. So if there is a problem on the fire ground or if you have any issues and you don't have the correct wrench around, then you can make small adjustments. If larger adjustments are necessary, this particular one uses a 9/16 wrench. Insert into the top and rotate that handle as necessary until it feels correct. For the 16 inch, it's a little bit more complicated. In order to keep the dimensions down, we've hidden it behind the optional shore power box. These two screws and this screw here will need to be removed before the shore power box can be rotated out of the way and access to the nut can be gained. A stubby screwdriver can be very useful for this particular screw. Once those three screws are detached, you will have to remove the silicone contact and allow this to hang. If necessary, get a second hand or uh, some kind of stand. Once you've gained access to this Phillips head screw, hold tight and rotate as necessary to get the desired resistance on the tilt function. Once you've found the correct tightness, short power box will now need to be reinstalled. To preserve the waterproofness, this area will need to be re-silicone as well as on the, from the inside. Uh, maneuverability, so are the wheels wobbly? Are they loose? Do you have any kind of issues with the feet? These feet are, they're going to take most of the abuse, so you will see these feet wear down as time goes on. They also do take a lot of abuse during placement. Uh, if the threads wear out, if these want to wobble out, uh, we have these for replacement. They're a quick and easy solution. We use blue Loctite, but they shouldn't be able to be unscrewed with your hand. What you'd like to do is uh, put a little blue Loctite on that thread and thread it back in, allow it to dry, and that'll be good for another year's use at least. Wheels, these are attached with a bolt that runs the length. If you need to just simply tighten, one can be used. If you need to loosen all the way, then you will need both Allen wrenches. These are good, so I won't mess with them. The handle can also get worn. If this plunger does not go all the way into its locking position, this nut can be loosened. And this can be threaded further in. until the plunger is correctly locked in place. Tighten the locking nut, good and snug, and test it. Some of the shore power options that don't come with the US standard plug style will have a cord. 
This cord should be checked regularly for any kind of damage, uh, brittleness, cracking. Uh, replace that if there is any kind of cracking to prevent shocking hazard. Once the regular maintenance has been completed, you should check the preparation of all the features. Tilt 180 degrees. Handle. Wheels. Make sure all the fasteners are tightened down. Down in this lower part. Make sure these guys are good and tight. They feel good. Go ahead and turn your fan on. Throttle. Make sure the light works. Power's down. Make sure there's no buildup in the AC plug. If everything looks good, then you've done your job and regular maintenance has been completed. If you have any questions, contact us over at SuperVac. Call us at 970-297-7100 or you can email us at info at SuperVac.com. Thank you.